Okay, if you're doing an experiment on photosynthesis, you probably know that you could, some of your independent variables could be like light intensity or carbon dioxide concentration or the temperature, but how will you actually know if you're affecting photosynthesis? So you want to be able to figure out uh, how you can actually identify or measure uh, photosynthesis. So we're looking really at the dependent variables. And so we're just going to look at a few of those here and then make some predictions about what we can expect to happen. So when we're looking at photosynthesis, um, the equation for photosynthesis is the opposite of cellular respiration, right? So plants are taking in carbon dioxide and water using some light energy to produce uh, basically glucose and oxygen as a waste product. So you can measure the production of this waste product oxygen and if you're using aquatic plants that's very easy because you can measure the volume or count the number of bubbles of gas that are actually being produced here. You can measure the uptake of carbon dioxide. If carbon dioxide is absorbed from water so you'll have to have a closed environment here uh, uptake of carbon dioxide you should expect that uh, the pH is going to rise. The more carbon dioxide that's dissolved inside water the more acidic it's going to be so you can measure those changes as well too and then there's a third way which uh, is considered an indirect measure because these are all direct measures because these are specific um, products basically as the plants do photosynthesis you know they're, they're going to be producing glucose and that glucose can be accumulated and stored as starch um, there's no easy way to pull out all of that glucose and directly measure the weight of the glucose or measure the weight of the the starch but uh, overall we can say its biomass will increase so you can assume that the increase in biomass is a result of uh, accumulating starch uh, and glucose that's in there so we consider that to be an indirect measure of photosynthetic rate okay now if we look specifically at some of these things for light intensity, well we can make some predictions. The more light we have, probably rate of photosynthesis will go up. So we're going to probably going to see a, a line going up in a somewhat linear fashion. But eventually we might reach a point where more light doesn't change anything and so we actually end up with a situation like that. So this is, if you're doing an experiment, then you would reference some textbook about that and then see if your results actually match that. Not a very exciting experiment. Try to design something a little bit more interesting than this. But at low to medium light intensities, we have a proportional uh, relationship between light intensity and the rate of photosynthesis. At high light intensities, uh, we reach a plateau. Um, here is where you can get into some detail about in your conclu conclusion about why we're reaching a plateau something else is possibly becoming uh, a limiting factor and it could be one of these other things carbon dioxide concentration we should probably expect it to increase as well and also reach a peak but one important thing to note is um, that at extremely low carbon dioxide concentrations you're probably not going to get any kind of photosynthesis happening at all so that's important to mention here we have a fairly uh, linear relationship and at high concentrations um, you're also going to be limited by some other factor here and finally with temperature <clears throat> temperature this one's interesting if, as temperature increases you might expect more collisions between molecules more collisions probably means greater reaction rates so more photosynthesis um, but if temperature gets too high you might be messing with some of those molecules that are important like enzymes and you know that enzymes can get denatured at high temperatures um, Enzyme reaction rates with temperature, it's not a linear relationship so much. This should be more smooth. I, I clicked and dragged. But anyways, this is a, an ex exponential rise. And uh, you'll see as the temperature increases, the rate increases more and more steeply. And we reach an optimum temperature. In our body, any enzymes that are functioning in our body is going to be optimum at 37 degrees approximately so body temperature anything higher than that and the same is true for for plants for the most part as well too they all have uh the enzymes have an optimum temperature and above that um it's gonna drop off because of denaturing that's basically it and here's a, a demonstration here's, if you have some kind of experiment you were doing obviously uh, the, the higher the light intensity if you could you should try to measure this quantitatively as well instead of just the distance from the light but nowadays you have a lot of various types of data 
loggers and probes. So you may even be able to measure the changes in concentration of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the air directly, which is quite interesting. So that was a summary of different ways to measure photosynthesis. We're talking about the dependent variables.